the music business is not a meritocracy. It doesn't matter if you make the best beats, if you have the best music. There's a lot more that goes into having a successful music career. I don't care if an AI model can make dope beats, like what happens after the beat is made. Yo, what's going on? This is MJ. I'm the CEO of Lemonade Music, and y'all can just know me as the AI and Music Plug. I am here with some legends. Number one co-signer, Mr. Don <laughs> Cannon. The legend. The legend. The GOAT. Yes, sir. What's, going on? what's up, man? Good to have you as always. And we got what Instagram has actually officially deemed the king of remixes. <laughs> what's up? Hey, yo. Yeah, we got, we got up, a dad, what's up? Dad, dad, we, show, we got a good gang today. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. All right, we got it. Yeah, might as well. Might as well. <laughs> Yeah. You want to introduce yourself real quick? It's first time you're on the show. Yeah, I go by Cato on the track. I'm a producer, entrepreneur. Um, you might have seen me on TikTok or Instagram, yes, just yes, posting my beats, hey. you know? Yes, sir. That's that's what I do, man. I've, I've uh, been blessed to work with a lot of dope people in my career. So happy to be here with y'all, man. Yeah. Let's go, man. Yeah. So, I mean, I feel like right now the topic that's been blowing up is music in general because of all the things going on in the rap world, but especially AI and music has been blowing up. And for me, the thing that like irks me the most is there's so many AI and music companies that are like born overnight at this point. And they're all like, we're musicians who so are making tools for musicians. Yeah. It's the cheesiest tagline though. And I'll, I'll even say it because I've said it. <laughs> when we started our company, I said, you know, we're musicians making tools for musicians. But all of a sudden, I almost had an epiphany like six months ago where I was like, you know what? I'm a musician, but I'm a hobbyist as a musician. Mm. Like, you know, and all these other founders, they're privileged to have like these educations in technology funding of like millions of dollars or whatever. And they're trying to get away with this cute tagline like we are musicians building tools for musicians. So mm. what I want to do on this show is like talk to you two who are like, who've been in the space, completely different like histories, of course, mm -hmm. you know, been in this space since I don't even know when, before I was born, <laughs> you know, for, for some He time. just called you <laughs> out, bro. <laughs> I might be young, who knows, who knows? <laughs> yeah, I got my parents behind, <laughs> behind the brick wall over here, <laughs> you know, but, but you know, absolute legend. And then we got Cato on the track as well, who's an absolute legend, but completely different vertical in terms of like the way you've been able to like do things on social media is like, I haven't seen producers do things the way you've been able to. So my point is we got two musicians who have done this full time and, you know, make a lot of bread making music. And we want to hear from you. I want to hear from you on how to actually build the future of AI and music. Yeah. So let's jump into it. First question, just super easy, very simple. Um, what do you guys think of AI and music? I'll let you answer first. All right, all right. I mean, I think it depends on the context of of how you're using the AI, yeah. right? Like, what I'm not a fan of, I can tell you, is using it in a way where it's exploitative mm. of artists. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, it's like, if you're putting this tech out into the world um, without the consent of mm. the artists who you're trying to mimic or the artists that are behind it. And there's no economics or commerce mm. behind it to actually, you know, give back to the musicians and the community. Right. I think that's exploitative. It's yeah. exploitative of the artists, the musicians, the art form, mm. and it just devalues I mean, there's so much exploitation in the music business as it is, right? right so right. the last thing we need is a technology that is, again, just exploitative of, of that community. So that's what I'm not a fan of, but mm. I think there is definitely space for AI. I mean, it's already here, right? you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think the smart thing to do is embrace it, but also make sure that we understand how it works. Yeah. And we support the tech that is doing it right. We support the companies that are doing it the right way and not just exploiting, you know? Right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's tough because I'm a past, present, and future kind of guy. So yeah. um, in my heyday, 
I would have loved to have stem stems, you know, mm. uh, for remixing when I go to the club. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we option we didn't have that option, so we had to trick uh, and manipulate machines to work in our favor. Yeah. Uh, some sound recordings back in the day, phonographs. We could turn something left and would pan out the drums, mm. turn it right, pan out the vocals. So that was always a dream to get in that space from that level. But at the landscape, technology is open floor. Yeah. It's not, you cannot turn anybody away. It's not the party that you say, hey, you don't got the right shoes on, you can't come in here. Mm. So that's what we're dealing with now is yeah. that anybody can do anything. And that's what these tools are. It's like, yeah. hey, uh, I always used to bash sky's the limit because when you don't put a cap on things, mm. you get this turnout. Mm. I'll be able to put my own Don Cannon mixtape out when I hit him in a DM and he doesn't hit me and says, I want to do your mixtape or whatever. I'm going to put it out anyway because mm -hmm. I could just take his voice, manipulate it, and get do the drops on the tape. Yeah. It won't be the same thing, right. but this is the gift and the curse of technology yeah. uh, as we see it. So it's like, you know, I love the fact of it, but I think that we have a lot to move forward with trying to kind of be some gatekeepers in the tech world yeah. in order to limit uh, the some possibilities. Regulation. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Well, you bring limit. up a great point, especially because, like, like, of course, we talked about Hard on My Sleeve with the Drake AI remix before. Yeah. But yeah. then even in the middle of the rap beef going on, before Drake respond and i don't even know if he actually responded or not but that's the crazy part the fact that like i genuinely have to question and like people that like actually listen to music question yeah was that actually an artist or not is crazy so to your point like i, I love the idea of sky's the limit too but like understanding how powerful ai is if artists don't understand how it works yeah. it's probably the worst case scenario because like even to break it down and to make it real scary <laughs> real quick yeah. like AI companies typically are like massively funded, right? By these like VC companies. Mm -hmm. Their number one goal is to make as much money as possible. Yep. Yeah. In order to make quality music, you need quality and training data. Yeah. Right. And the fact is, like, I feel like you two actually get it, but the majority of people, like, I think 99% of people that are music producers or musicians don't understand how AI works. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be really easy to, like, you know, like, I don't even know how you protect your data yet. That's a scary part, but it's going to be really easy to like, you know, talk to some random Joe Schmo company that DMs you or like emails you like, Hey, like I would love to train on your data. And if you say no, they can still do it. Yeah. And the worst part about that is we talked about this yesterday, but to reverse engineer a AI model is almost impossible right now. So mm. <laughs> not to make a doomsday, but I'm just saying you're right. Like, yeah. like even if you say no, people can still do it and there's no way to prove it right now, you know, in terms of like, you know. Yeah, and, it, feel, and, if, and it almost feels like, I'm, I'm probably gonna show my age, but like when we had Nintendo, <laughs> yeah, when, when, we, <laughs> when we had Nintendo, uh, we would have like Contra and we would have uh, Mike Tyson punch out in these various games and then you're going, you know, wherever you had and somebody said, yo, I got the secret code. You go up, up, down, down, left, right, left route, BA select start and you go to the 10th level. You're skipping levels. Yeah. yeah. And in the comfortable world and as we move into that Ooh. space, it feels more like I want to skip all these steps. Mm. I don't want to do the hard work. Yeah. 10,000 hours is a myth. Right. You know what I'm saying? So they're like, we're really dispelling or getting rid of all of those slangs that we have to say on these podcasts and these uh, speaking engagements like, hey man, God is gonna get you there, just keep working hard. They're yeah. getting past all these things, mm -hmm. 10,000 hours, yeah. uh, sky's the limit. They're just yeah. moving past that with technology. That's why I say it's an open floor because people are able to say, hey man, I don't have to learn about Marvin Gaye. I don't have to learn right. about Mob Deep. I don't have to learn about Beyonce. I'm right, right there. Yeah. In a second, I just had a nine to five at a sandwich spot, yeah. and now I'm the biggest rap star out. Yeah, like this for technology. So yeah. there, there's a lot on the other side besides training and doing things that we're getting in a space where it's like, oh snap, it's really real. Like yeah. it's, it's real, right? Yeah, it's real. On that point, have you guys heard, or like, what do you think of fully? AI generated music, like the whole song, the vocals, the beat. Someone went to like a chat GPT like interface, typed in, give me a, a Drake song, and it was outputted. Mm -hmm. And then they uploaded to Spotify and it does well. Like, what do you guys think of stuff like that? Outside of open AI, 
it may become something beneficial for K and S. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, there's there's this thing in rap music where we fl- we flip and chop samples. Mm. Mm-hmm. If we can get in a space where it's totally royalty free and it's coming from another mm. trained machine, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could actually make our own songs, sample them, and and put them in a beat and sell it to an artist. Mm. That's what I would look forward to. You know what I mean? Because mm. there's so many samples now. It's so popular to sample. People's estates are charging ridiculous prices for master usage and things like this. Yeah. This could help bring a different, you know, vibe when yeah. it comes to music. Um, but there's also things where we'll flood up the ecosystem. Like I showed you the vinyl uh, obscure playlist, and it was just people. It, it had to be kids because they were just randomly saying, "I'll kick my boss's ass," da 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 da, and put yeah. a song to it and make it sound like the 1960s. It's kind of like it's flooding the market. It's putting yeah, just yeah, it's yeah. putting oil in the water. So yeah. right. I'm just kind of like. I don't, I'm not excited about that part, but for the sample part, okay, I'm like, so okay. I, yeah, I love that. Right. That's the optimistic point of view. But let me ask you this, because obviously you sign artists. If there was an art, if there was a human that could generate fully generated songs that were hits on Spotify, would you sign someone like that? Me personally? Yeah. No. Okay. I have to have human experience. Okay. Mm, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I'm not knocking it, but just me, if I was 17 years old, maybe. Yeah. You know, the, where I'm at in the, in the work and the skin in the game I have, like I would never uh, sacrifice my human experience. Mm-hmm. You know, I love to go into Tower Records and go to buy Method Man's album and uh, somebody coming down the aisle like, man, that Method Man's hard, but you listen to this. Yeah. And get Tech Nine's album in the same breath of getting Lil' Kim's album or buying, you know, seeing Andre 3000's book. Yeah. Like I love the experience of somebody telling me how it was, where it was, how mm-hmm. we wrote it, when we did it, why my finger was hurting when I was pressing the start button. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like all that Yeah. I don't want to miss. That's the magic yeah. that I, I live for. No, I, I love that. Yeah. yeah. And I think that ultimately speaks to like AI's role in our industry, right? It's like, not, I don't think there's any musician alive that wants to take the human element out of music. Exactly. Yeah. Right? So That's, it's like, yeah. as long as we're starting from that place, yep. I think it'll move in the right direction. Right. It just might take some turns along the way, but ultimately I feel like AI will end up in a place where it's used as a tool to help people make better music or right. to sample you know, records and like, from a creative standpoint, from a workflow standpoint, it'll help us do our jobs better. Yeah. But it's never going to eliminate the human part. You yeah. know, and I, I think that's a really important piece to just keep in mind. You right. Know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, real. So for on sure. that point, I feel like both of you have been in this space long enough that the industry has already changed so many times before. So is there like what about AI makes this so scary? Because maybe this is my <laughs> first time going through this process. But like, I mean, again, like like history you guys have in this space, the industry's changed before, you know, like going from like, you know, even the digital audio workstation to VSTs to like, you know, you know, not using vinyl anymore, list goes on. Like, does this feel any different? Or does it feel the same and everyone's just fearful because the change is coming? I think human nature has it where we came up and we saw the attack of the robots. You know what I mean? And I <laughs> yeah. think that's where that's, the initial yeah, scary thought true, comes from. Right? It's like, oh, snap, the robots are taking over the world. That's the initial spot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because without knowledge, you don't know what that actually means. The robots are taking over until we press stop, and then right. they stop in their tracks. Right. And then, so uh, I think the initial thought process of it, I think people don't understand, and they only see the aliens are coming. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's it. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, once we yeah. get past the aliens company, when they that's land and they be they hop out the ship and they got the gold chain on and the bust down watch, they're like, we like y'all. <laughs> Yo, aliens kind of fly. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> then we're like, oh shit, it's not that bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. you know. I mean, I, I saw JD, Jermaine Dupri, post a video the other day talking about how yeah, seen that he doesn't like that we just let tech companies come into the music space and just do whatever they want. Yeah. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And 
I think it's valid. It's a that. valid concern. And it just shows across the board, no matter what level you're at, it's a concern. And I think those concerns are valid. And that's why it's going to steer AI in the right direction because our initial response is going to be out of fear because yeah. we don't know what it is. Right. We don't know what it can do. We don't mm -hmm. know where it's going. And so that's where the fear comes from. But I mean, like, it's going to happen. It's already here. Yeah. I think the best that we can do is embrace it and kind of steer it in the right direction. I mean, if you take a platform like BeatStars, for example, say what you want about BeatStars, but it's created a whole economy right. for producers. Mm. It's yeah. changed people's hey, lives. Shout out to BeatStars. <laughs> you know, like it's gotten producers cooking up beats in their basement, some of the biggest placements ever. Right. You know what I mean? And so whether you like it or not, BeatStars was something that came into the music space and like changed it for the better, right. in my opinion. Yeah. And so I kind of look at AI the same way as like a technology. It's mm. I think that it has the potential to change our industry for the better as long as we do the education and understand how it works and and we support the companies that are doing it the right way. You know? Yeah, and to add to your point with what JD says, I I, I totally agree. But um most of us in music have some type of tech background. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's we, true. We right. do have some tech background. You know, when I when I was younger, I would open up machines and take them apart and put them back together to understand how they work. Yeah. Because I wanted to know the ins and outs of everything. Same thing with tape decks. Right. I would take the tape when it popped. I'd take tape, tape it together, put it back in there, re-record, put uh, tissue in the top. Like, that's a form of technology in our brains. We're like, we're creating in that to manipulate the machine. Yeah. So I think that like most of us, I, I, and I know he was geared to talking to uh, some people that have nothing to do with music and they're just like, hey, this always been my dream. It looks like fun job. Let me do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But for sure. No, but for most of us, we're all tech. Like I know at the table, we're all technical. Yeah, yeah. You know of course. I mean? I mean, you brought up two things that I love, which is one, um, even for me when I was growing up, when I was 11, I got cool at it to uh, cool at a pro 2.0. Yeah. Do you yeah. guys remember that doll? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because I had no business like doing anything I was doing in that doll. But when I reflect on how technical I was at 11 years old, mm -hmm. I feel like if you were a music producer, audio engineer, a recording artist who records their own vocals, you probably have the technical chops to understand AI Easy, pretty well. Sure. Easily, you know what yeah. I mean? Easily. Um, so that, that's a great point. Like I think like musicians are technical. Um, but then the second part, I agree with you fully. Like when I was at Google, the amount of people I talked to that were, they love music. Mm -hmm. And that's what irks me the most again. Cause like music is such a personal thing where it's, there's a chance your story, your trauma or something is in your music and you had to work to get that mm -hmm. produced. So to think about someone who's got like a day job and is just geeking out about, oh, that'd just be cool to like get into music. And mm -hmm. then they start taking advantage and replacing the income of actual musicians. Again, that's why we're having this. Yeah, our dreams, are, our dreams are gone now. Right. You think about right. it like that everything's obtainable. Yeah. Right. I, like when I was coming up struggling as a producer, I didn't think a Ferrari is obtainable. Yeah. Not that I got one, but I it just, it's like if I wanted <laughs> to, I would, <laughs> <laughs> I would go. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. the same thing with like some of the people they are moving around. It, music's not as obtainable as like my, my first conversation. I was saying there has to be some type of gatekeeping yeah. to where we could be like, okay, that's not obtainable. Right, <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? Like right now, you could just get a, a controller to DJ, type in two sync buttons, and you can mix any record you want, and you're a DJ and you're at the party. Yeah. Right, right. And I'm not knocking it. I just know that that's a crutch to what some people had to, you know, move. And, and a lot of us that came from that type of experience often look down on the people that are moving forward with that, but that's not the same thing I'm speaking of. I'm speaking of learning the essence so you know that if you can i'm the person that wants to be able to make a beat on ableton reason yeah. lemonade hey, <laughs> hey, go to beat stars go to apple go right. to spotify and do certain things i want to be able to collab with him and say he uses uh reason and if he uses reason i'm going to learn reasons because when we're together i don't got my tools but we can work reason because mm. i know how to do it yeah. so it goes further into that space where it's not just i can't do nothing without my midi controller i've had auditions and people in front of me and i'm like let's see if you can dj yeah and they couldn't because they were either were scared or just was like 
well, it usually works. It, uh, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's all those things that's adding up. It's just like, man, we got to get to the point where we're able for a seven year old, eight year old, 12 year old, 14, 17 year old to dream again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and AI takes the dream. Away. It's like, I can do it right now. Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah. no, we got a dream to get there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's got to I mean, be a, a baseline. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. In a way, though, I think that's what makes you who you are. Mm. Like, you put in the work and you, like if, the fact that I actually believe if you don't know reason, you probably do. But if you didn't, uh, I do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But if you did it before you go to Cato's place, I'm sure you would actually learn reason before you got there. Yeah. And mm -hmm. to me, if, if that, if that was me as an artist and you were coming over and you learned my dog, that would weirdly mean a lot to me. Yep. And I feel like even that session we had together would be so much more meaningful. Cause like it's two humans connecting. Really? So all I'm trying to say is I think that's what makes you who you are. Really? Um, and I have a feeling that, I not a feeling. I know for a fact AI can't replicate that kind of thing. Real, you know what I mean? Like you can make a hit on Spotify, but the second you're actually in the studio with real artists and yeah. they ask you, like, can you like make a drum pattern and you give them like, you know, a drum <laughs> machine, they're gonna be like, yo, what? Right. <laughs> yeah, what? Where's lemonade at? You know what I mean? Yeah. That's true. That's true. That's true. What are you kidding? Yeah, I mean, I, I wanna go back to the uh the whole ghostwriter thing. The, yeah, the heart on my sleeve, on my right? Sleeve, right. Cause uh I actually I connected with him on Instagram oh, dope. and uh, he wanted beats from me. Like he asked if I could send him some beats and I was like, are you? Whoa. <laughs> I was like, He's got like the- Wait a second. The, Whoa. the blanket over his head. <laughs> so I was like, let me call you, bro. So I called him and uh, you know, he just sounded like this young kid yeah. who mm -hmm. loved making music, probably had some bad experiences in the music business and um, was just like in a rebellious sort of way making this AI music as a big F you to the industry. Mm. And as I was talking with him, like he told me the whole situation about Heart on My Sleeve. He played me the raw kind of like vocals that he laid and then he ran it through an AI voice generator to right. get it sound like Drake the and Weekend. It, right. Yeah. Um, and then he broke down the business because that was like really what I was wondering is like, okay, so this track went crazy. On, it blew up the internet, yeah. right? And then it got taken down. It seems like it just disappeared from everywhere. So what happened? Um, and, you know, he told me, he broke down like what happened with that actual song. And I don't want to put him on blast. I don't know if he signed an NDA or whatever. So <laughs> yeah, I don't want to put his business <laughs> out there. But uh, we can talk about it off camera. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it was just like really interesting. And it, it kind of put into perspective like where we're at mm. now in in music. And what's even crazier is it didn't seem like that long ago when electric cars seemed like it was so far in the future. Yep. Yeah. You know? Like I can still remember thinking like, oh, this shit's never going to happen, at least not in my lifetime. And now one out of every five cars on the road is an electric car. Yeah. So I think we're a lot closer to AI becoming a major, major part of our ecosystem. Right. Closer than we probably think. Um, so, you know, I think we we just have to embrace it and, mm -hmm. and figure out how to move forward with it. Right. So on that note, there's this buzzword that's ethical AI. Like, people are throwing it around. And like, you know, I have my own definition of it, but I'm just curious from y'all's point of view, like what would be ethical AI? Like, are there any standards that you would want a company that you work with of like, like a vetting process they went through or like something they do to not replace artists or empower them? Like what would be your way to define what is ethical AI? And I'm happy to provide more context on that. Um, I would actually say not to be ethical with technology and AI, only mm -hmm. because you look at the Wizard of Oz, the Tin Man has no heart. Yeah. Robots have no heart. If you tell them to stand still, they stand still. They're just being told what to do. So I feel like making a robot with a heart kind of defeats the purpose of technology. Yeah. Because then they'll be making moves without us. We won't be able to control it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because yeah, it'll yeah. be like, I don't want to stand still no more. I want to put my hand up. Right. So now we're in a space where uh, we're fighting against <laughs> an ethical machine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think that defeats the purpose. I'd, ra I'd rather they just kill it all together. Hmm. 
then put a heart into it. Now, wow. for yeah. the owners, it's to figure out how to make uh, ethical decisions mm. to not put out certain pieces of the technology mm. that could go too far. Yeah. That's that's how I look at it from there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The, okay. Ethi the ethics lies in the people that's building. Right, of course. Yeah. And not putting it into the machine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah, be like, yeah. hey, I'm going to make this beat programming machine, but I'm not going to do this. Right. That's going to put too much heart into okay. it. Okay. We got to come back to that. Uh, All right. Yeah. All right, uh, I think. I think for me, number one, I would want to know that musicians played some role in the creation of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? I'd want to know that it wasn't just shareholders looking for profit. Right. Right. I'd want to know that uh, because if there were musicians behind making it, I know that there was some thought into, all right, how do I create the best tech for fellow musicians? Right. Right. Yep. Yep. So that's number one. And then number two, I think the economics of it. Yeah. Like, again, yeah. it goes back to the exploitative part, or is it being used as a tool to help the community and to put money back into the pockets of creators, musicians, right. artists? So those would be the two, I think, biggest factors for me in terms of, like, an AI yeah. company putting some tech out totally. there. Yeah, totally, because, like, you know, I've broken down the three-step process a lot on this show, but Cato, just to bring you up to speed as well. So within machine learning, there's three steps. There's the training data, there's the training of the model, and then there's the prediction step. Predictions is like when you hit generate on chat GPT or even Lemonade, that's what uh -huh. it's doing, right? Right. So the training data, this isn't just a music problem, this is an AI problem. The more training data you have, it is like scientifically proven, the better your algorithm will be. But it's not just the more, it's the more high quality. Gotcha. So garbage in is garbage out. Gotcha. So the thing is exactly what you're saying to me that what I'm passionate about, and this is what I want to get your take on too, is like you put in work to make your music as quality as it is. Uh -huh. So if a company didn't even ask you and they took your data off, you know, whatever platforms, and now they're training an algorithm on it, I would argue it doesn't matter how much money that company makes, the most valuable thing they have is their training data. Yeah. And they got it for free. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that that's my part of ethics that like, you know, mm. again, like I really want to hear your take too cuz cuz while I agree like we should let the technology get as powerful as it can get, what I don't necessarily agree with is like, you know, if someone put in their heart and soul to build a catalog that actually is worth something, but they didn't know it was worth something cuz you don't they didn't realize that training data is expensive mm. and a company just stole it that to me feels unethical, you know? Yeah, there's two sides. So I'll give you two sides and I'm, I'll challenge you to it. Yeah. Um, the one side of it, as you explained it, somebody training a model after me or my catalog. Yeah. Uh, one, I'm a vessel of inspiration. Yeah. So I would not necessarily trip on yeah. it. Okay. But um, you don't want to say that on this show, bro. Well, well, the only reason I'm the only reason I'm saying that is because be like again, the, the, the music wild. the music is inspirational. Yeah, you know, people are inspired by everything we do as musicians. Right. Um, I don't want somebody to use my voice. No. Yeah. But if they're trying to make a beat like I made, right, that was happening already. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are, I grew up wanting to be DJ Premier. Right. My training wheels were DJ Premier right. until my training wheels fell off and mm. I and I made a Don Cannon. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. That's training wheels uh, is a good analogy yeah, so, too. So I know, again, I'm not aging myself, but I know <laughs> these things are steps of where we already been. Yeah. Hip hop was built on sampling, reconstructing mm -hmm. other people's in ideas and coming up with new inspiration. Yeah. So that part is like part of hip hop for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But the copyright infringement part yeah. is yeah. the part that okay. I'm having difficulty with. Right. Uh, because when people exploit, they they tend to over exploit of course mm -hmm. you know right. what i mean so so when you're having that space it's like all right don't overdo it yeah, yeah <laughs> you yeah. know what i'm saying so, don't so go saying, like if don't like, go too someone far someone was in their basement they like trained a model with 
whatever, like someone's data, one of your artist data, your data, whatever, but they just made like one track with it is, and they didn't make money off the algorithm. It's like, all right, well, you're, you're kind of doing a similar thing that hip hop or like sampling is. But it's like when a company would take your data and they start making money on the behalf of your data. And also, that's and, your copy yeah, rights. the companies are difficult, but when people are doing it, it's more like, hey, put a flag up and say, hey, I'm trying to be Southside today. Yeah. I'm trying to be Kato today. Yeah. I'm trying to be yeah. fucking Metro Boomin today. Yeah, yeah. Don't just do it and be like, yeah, oh, I came up with it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I'd rather yeah, you be yeah. like, hey, if I was inspired. About the process, right, I was right, inspired right, okay. by Toomp. Right. To make this, right? You know what I mean, and that would make it okay, yeah. Because it's like, oh, they, you know, it's yeah. paying homage, flattering. Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. You got any additional thoughts on that, or? Um, no, I think, I mean, I think Cannon said it. Yeah, like, I fully agree. So let's say there was an AI that could fully generate beats just like y'all. Like, let's pretend like Doomsday happened. There mm -hmm. was some company that stole y'all's data. And there's like the Cato model and the Canon model and rappers are wanting to buy beats from that model. Yeah. Right. So first you're not even in the mix. Yeah. They just said like, you know, we're not connecting, we're not paying them that. So that's happened. Let's pretend it happened. How would y'all keep your edge? I'm calling his phone. We hopping in the wheel and we're going to see him. <laughs> we, pull, we pulling up. We're pulling up. We pulling him. up. Yeah, I'm calling Lemonade headquarters right now. Yo, shut it down. That's, no, that's, that's number one. We're pulling up. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll let him go with number two, but that's first. We're pulling up. Yo, the Matt Black whips are coming. Yeah, right, we're pulling right. up. The Batman. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, he would have to answer, but I would say my first answer is we're pulling up. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I th you, you're definitely standing on business with that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I think the last part was like, how, how would, we how would you keep your edge? edge? Like why, why are people still going to your profile to buy beats versus the AI Kato? I mean, I would hope it, it goes back to what we talked about earlier is like, you can't recreate that human element. You know right. what I mean? For like, sure. Personality. And on top of that, everyone at this table knows that the music business is not a meritocracy. It doesn't matter if you yes. make That's the best word. beats. Facts. It doesn't make matter if you have the best music. There's a lot more that goes into having a successful music career. Real so deal. it's not just about the beats, right. right? I don't I don't care if an AI model can make dope beats like what happens after the beat is made. Is mm. that AI going to get in the studio and be able to actually produce mm. a record with an artist? Yep. Right. You know, are they going to have the platform to get it out there for fans to listen to? Are they going to like make the videos and post on so like they, yeah, it's yeah. not going to go that far, right. I hope. <laughs> but <laughs> like that's that's kind of the point is it kind of stops there, right? Yep. What we're talking about. Right. And it takes a lot more to have a successful music career. So I'm not necessarily worried about any person or any machine or any AI making better beats than me. I know what I'm good at, mm. you know? And that's what I know cannot be replicated. Right. For a fact. So it's the know? next step. Like you're not even worried about the music almost. It's the next step. Yeah. The next it's almost step competition is, too. Like, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm willing to bet he's almost the same as me. If I hear that, in the vicinity of me, yeah. I'm going to show you why you're not me. thousand mm. percent. You know what I mean? It's a exactly it turns right. into the competitive so world that, that, for me. That's part of the question. Yeah. So, like, are there any specifics or, like, nuances for you you feel like are, like, that I'm going to do that to make it more me? Well, it's just magic. When yeah, you're creating, yeah. things happen by accident. Right. That's yeah. where the magic is, by yeah. accident. I've done plenty of remixes. I've done plenty of beats. Uh, some episodes I've shown that in Backtrack, I was remaking the Cannon yeah, Beat from scratch. Episode, right? yeah. But I was re-chopping, and the chops were different. I'm like, why didn't that happen in 2005? Yeah. Yeah. That's the magic in it right. where I know AI is going to regiment it. Yeah. It's like, you know, we had machines. I never quantized. Yeah, of course, right. Quantizing is a form of AI. Yeah. It's yeah. putting it on beat. On the grid. So right? I wasn't doing that. So that's my character. So yeah. when you hear the snare went off a little bit, yeah, 
That was the you're, character. You're bold enough to make that move. But I would challenge him. I would go head to head with the robot, like, hey, let's go. Yeah. Like, you're going to shoot a three. Steph's going to shoot a three. That would be yeah, a fun yeah. episode <laughs> you once know? we get to that point. <laughs> like, do a, a face to, like, a uh, yeah. face off. Yeah. Yeah. AI, yeah. AI yeah. versus Candid. But, but, yeah. but, you know, I, I'm pretty sure he's the same way. Like, he, he's going to challenge. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. there's something in us as musicians that we have to challenge. Yeah. You know, I hear people's beats all the time and be like, man, I'm going to do better than that. Right. Not because I don't like them. It's just I'm competitive. It's right. a competitive thing. It's like I'm I'm getting my chops up. You yeah. Know? I feel like people need to hear that more. Yeah. Because I don't know about y'all, but my Instagram feed is just filled with like it is doomsday. Like people are so afraid of AI. And like even for me running an AI company that I would argue is ethical and like we intentionally don't try to replace artists. We're only doing inspirational starters, man. I'm about to go off. Yeah. Um, Get your bulletproof vest. Yeah, exactly. Because right, they're right, on right. you. No, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like you, you don't even want to see my TikTok comments, bro. I'm in the middle of Manhattan about to get hit by a taxi. Like just trying to respond to yeah. these like 12 yeah. year old kids. Like yeah. user 986 is like, yeah. bro, you're, you're like, you're, uh, I don't even want to say what they said. Yeah. I'm about to get too, too bleeped out. But I think what you just said is so important for people to realize and hear. Yeah. Because true musicians, like, have magic. Yes. And AI can't replicate magic. And even for me, like, the algorithms that we're training and going through the process, every melody, every drum pattern, every 808 we've ever generated, I've never thought when I drag that into my DAW, it's the completed project. Yeah. You know yes. what I mean? There's so much more you got to put on it. Like you could export it and bounce it and upload it. And yeah. you could get like 5,000 streams and it's all good. But it's almost like like a hype thing yeah. rather than substance. You're not going to feel good about yeah. it. Right. right <laughs> You're not right. going to feel yeah. good about it. Yeah. 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 Going yeah. out the door. And, and, you know, perfect example to take it one step further. It's like back when I first moved to Atlanta, I met an artist named Jaron Benton and we just locked in heavy, started like making a lot of music together. And there was just that like creative chemistry there. Right. And, um, but we hadn't had like the one song or the one moment that kind of popped. Yeah. And one day I was just sitting at the crib and I, I had this idea, super simple melody, but like really swingy, drums mm. and just like really dope unique sound and i made it with jaron in mind and as soon as i finished it i sent it to him and i called him and he was driving around he was at work or something and i was like bro i just made the craziest beat for you you gotta jump on this and he said he was like bet i'm gonna check it out and week goes by a month goes by and I'm like, yo, did you do something on that beat? Like, I'm dying to hear this. He was like, yeah, I don't know, man. I just, I couldn't get any ideas. Like, I didn't come up with anything. Yeah. I stayed on this dude for damn near a year trying to get him on this one beat. And he finally came through and just recorded one long freestyle. No hook, no nothing. It was just a freestyle that he did in his car while he was driving, right? We put the song out and that song ends up being our biggest song to date, even still to this day. That one song became like our flagship moment that yeah. blew him up. He got signed off of it. The video went viral. We went I was touring. mad about that. <laughs> I was mad about that because I tried to sign up. But go ahead. Hey. Oh, okay. <laughs> See? I lost the, I lost the deal. And it was probably that. That is not the problem. Nah, 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 nah. It was probably <laughs> that song that put him on the radar Facts. for a lot of people. Facts. I remember you know? that. Wow. And uh, that song, Schizo. And still mm. to this day, like people will get on stage and they'll rap that song yep. word for word. Wow. Yep. And that song almost didn't happen if I didn't stay on Jaren yeah. to like get on it and if I didn't have that vision in the first place to put him on it, yeah, it would have never happened. And right. that's something that AI will never be able to do. That's real. That's Bo real. Both of you said something similar, which is dope. Because like Cannon was like, if I'm going to Takedo's place, I'm going to learn reason. That's going the extra mile. And that right there is exactly it. Yep. You know what I mean? Like to be that persistent and hit someone up for a year, like that's what sets everyone apart from every industry in yeah. life. You know it's what I mean? It's the vision, bro. Right, like, exactly. It's, well, it's, the, it's the vision and the execution. And the execution. Yeah. Like to be bold enough to follow up and just keep going. Yeah, yeah that's good. I want to keep this one abstract intentionally. 
what are AI companies missing when it comes to understanding what an artist wants? He answered already. Artist relations. Artist relations. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. Artist relations because that's where we're going to get a real feel yeah. for it. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But th his answer was correct. Artist okay. relations. Mm -hmm. Well, then on that point, are there any AI tools that you use you feel like genuinely has changed the way you create at this point? Hmm. There's a bunch out. I mean, I've, I, I've actually used all of them. Yeah. I've used uh, Drum Monkey. You owe me a check. Uh, I've used, <laughs> hey, I've used, wow. I've used Lemonade. Yeah, sir. Um, I used Lander. Yeah. yeah. Aria Mastering, which is Colin Leonard's amazing program. That's yeah. the first thing I was able to really see warmth in a, in a mastering setting. Uh, I've used uh, Neural Mix. Y'all owe me a check. Uh, <laughs> this is the check collecting yeah, question. Uh, Serato. I've been down with Serato forever. Yeah. They're my partners. Uh, and they they finally came through with Stems. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's La La AI, which is another STEM company. Y'all owe yeah. me a check. Yeah. Uh, but there's a lot of um, there's a lot of companies. Again, I said this in, in another another interview that I started using AI stuff around 2016 working on Uzi because yeah. uh, we were out of pocket uh, f doing the first albums in mixtapes and I had to like figure out mastering without money mm. because we were putting so much money into other things. Uh, that's how I got into the Lander world. Mm. But uh, even a Ableton had some a few things that they were in their Max for Live that felt a little AI-ish. You right. know what I'm saying? So uh, I feel like they... The only tool that I probably will be missing now is probably a chip in my head. Yeah. And when I think of the beat, it's it prints out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. That's the only thing. And what would you want printed out? Would you want the whole beat printed out? And man, print dollar, out every thought go? I ever thought about. Yeah. I got five <laughs> songs in my head at one time. Print yeah, them all yeah, out, yeah. man. Let me print them out because, and, and, and we're laughing about it, but being a musician and, and being musical, I've had many nights my whole career when I'm in the middle of a dream and I hear a beat wow. and I wake up and I forget it. And wow. it's the most amazing beat in my dream. Yeah. And I wake up and it's gone. I yeah. know that feeling. You know what I mean? Wow. Okay. And I can't like, relate to that. How, That's crazy. How? And, and I think that I developed staying up all night because I didn't want to miss the beat. If I fall asleep, the dream's going to happen. And it's, it's always like once every three years and it's the most craziest beat you ever gonna hear. Wow. So when I hear it and I can't get up and develop it, it's the worst it's the shit worst. in the yeah. world, bro. And that's why I'm like, that might be the only thing. If I could get a yeah. chip to say, yo, he's dreaming, the beat is recording, and I wake up, I take the chip off, put yeah, it in, yeah. well, you and made, I have the beat. You made so many I'm legendary. <laughs> 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 you got Elon Musk DMing you now. Like, I'm gonna like, get you the you made, chip. You made so many legendary beats. Do you feel like none of them were that ghost, or like were that dream? Um, let me see. No, because m maybe, maybe. Yeah. Uh, and I think that uh, maybe God sent some inspiration right. down for some of the records. And I'll go through really quickly. Like uh, the reason that canon and go crazy happened was because i was in the south as an up north producer and i was trying to figure out a bounce for southern rappers to rap on my beats yeah mm -hmm. I, that was probably something that came in a dream and inspiration i'm not sure if that was something that i was genius enough to say you yeah know yeah like, yeah that was my genius right, I, mean, right, I would never right. put that out there uh just working with trick daddy and saying hey i want to do come on ride this train i want to do this sample and flip it into an East Coast beat, it's not something that my genius came up with. Right. It was from somewhere else. So maybe it was in the dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, well, maybe it wasn't. Yeah, I, I think we're, we're almost up-leveling it from like an AI to a humanity conversation. But I think, I mean, you know this better than like anyone in this room. Like, I feel like you got to get enough wins under your belt to realize that you are that person. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I feel like, if you woke up from a dream and had the AI just print that, like, I don't know if you would have got that win. Maybe you would have, because it yeah, was your dream. It's still my thought. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I think yeah. it's probably like, uh, and he probably can attest to it, if we're going to record stores and we're moving around, we're going to hear, me, I'm going to hear 1,000 songs a day. Yeah. And maybe accumulation of everything I'm hearing that's 
bringing this certain genre or thing in my head that's making me think about this amazing beat in the dream, right. you know? So uh, that's, that's what I'm looking at. Like, even with remixes, like when I used to do my remixes on mixtapes, again, that's not no genius thought. That's something that just came from somewhere. So I don't know if it's a speeding bullet of light. I don't know where it came from, but uh, it's a form of AI. So if we could kind of like twist it to make it without me getting a chip in my head, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, to get the thought out. Yeah, with, yeah. Would might might work. I thought that the Apple goggles was going to have that type of uh, uh, capability. I thought they were we're going to put it on there and then I'm going to be like, oh, they're nah, here in my can, brain. Yeah, you can you just know? watch movies in the bathroom. That's yeah, all you can really yeah. do. And I hear, I hear a lot of artists and producers, like I hear a lot of them saying, either wake up and like, I got to go to the studio. I got to get this off my brain. Mm. I'm, I'm anxious. I'm anxious. I'm anxious. And get it done. And be like, I got it out. Or mm. they dreamt something. Or Pharrell sometimes sees things in color wow. and he creates from color. Or you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's it's certain things that I'm hearing that maybe if somebody's genius can go and figure that out, might be cool. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Might be cool. Totally. Are there any AI tools used that has genuinely changed the way you create music right now? Oh yeah. I mean, ever since you know, I, I linked up with you and Abe told me about Lemonade. I started using it that day. Hey, that's a check. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. I got my check. I got my check. check. Yeah. <laughs> um, I started using it that day and pretty much incorporated it into my workflow moving on from that point. Um, and then, yeah, like I've used audio splitters where you can isolate the stems. Yeah. Uh, I remember one time, not that long ago, actually, Ludacris posted a cool like freestyle on his Instagram. Just had a beat playing in the background. You could still hear it, though. And so oh, I took I I his that. freestyle video and I ran it through the splitter and isolated his vocals and then made a new beat on top of it. Posted it on TikTok and on Instagram and it went crazy. Yeah, it went viral. And, uh, you know, so I, I was like hitting up Luda's people trying to get him like on the, mm. to cut the real record. Mm. He never ended up doing it because he's busy getting so much money. <laughs> Shout out to Luda. He's yeah. just busy getting money. Luda, Luda does not so need the funny. check cut because he's already <laughs> yeah. Um, But yeah, I've, I've used, you know, like basic AI tools ever since then. And I think at some point it'll, start to become a more regular part of my workflow. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this is the last question I got for you guys. It's 8, 856. Um, yeah, 856. He's clocking a 60 minute. No, I mean, I, Kato, Kato's got, I, he, we had two hours with Kato, so I want to be respectful of the time. Um, but I'll throw this one out, and if you guys have any more, we can get into it, of course. Um, so a lot of people look up to both of you guys. Um, and see you as a mentor, whether you like like it or not. You know, they follow you on Instagram or any platform. Um, like, what would you say to them if they're asking about how do I get through this AI music storm? And like, they're freaking out. They can't even make music right now because they're just like, I'm going to get replaced anyways. Build a bunker and hide. <laughs> Canada, was gonna be Canada's mine, always keeping it real. <laughs> Build a bunker and hide. I mean, things are going to keep happening. If you don't face the music, yeah. you'll never get past it. Dang. Fear is like, you know, I throw fear in the trash can. Mm -hmm. yeah. like, you, but, you know, literally my answer would be find a bunker. Yeah. Uh, but on a, on the bright side, uh, try, try to, the, the number one thing in the world for me is when I'm moving forward is education. If yeah. you cannot yeah. Get educated about everything moving, whether it's your health, whether it's computers, your career, understanding and why your parents act the way uh, they do, yeah. understanding where you've got PTSD from. Any of those things has to come from some type of education, right. you know what I mean, in order to find the real reason. Um, and that's what people aren't doing. Like they're saying, they're they're waiting for these spaceships. Like they had this... It's a spaceship in Miami, and they're way, they're like, oh my God, run! Like we shouldn't run. We don't know what it is. They might drop down free money, and they're yeah. like, oh, we here. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I think the education of it, but like, if you're scared, you know, get a dog, go to church, <laughs> go to build a build scared, a bunker. To <laughs> uh, you know, I seen uh, Mark Zuckerberg building a bunker. A million reasons why you think he's building a bunker, but yeah. 
he might be just scared. <laughs> He's a closet <laughs> you know? producer. We he, might, realize he, it. he might be <laughs> down there making beats. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, like, I, I would say just get a bunker. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, run towards it, man. Mm-hmm. Run towards it. I think, you know, like we've lived through the music industry being flipped on its head. Yeah. You know what I mean? When the streaming era came in, when Napster came out and mm. everyone was file sharing and just the whole industry got flipped on its head. Yeah. And you could argue that things change for better or for worse after that. But I think a lot of the smart artists were able to adapt and make it work for them. And they were, they learned about it. They educated themselves on, okay, how can I embrace this and move with it? I think the smart artists are going to embrace it, yeah. embrace AI, and they're going to be ahead of the curve and they're going to figure out how to make it work for them. And so that's what I would say, man. Like you can't, you can't fight technology and change when it's inevitable like that. Yeah. You just have to run towards it and embrace it. And I think you'll, you'll figure out how to make it work for you. Yeah. No, I love it. I mean, I think that the biggest takeaway I, I have from you two again is regardless of how good the technology gets, there's still things that's going to set both of you apart. Mm. Like you go the extra mile, you put in the work and a kid and said, if you're afraid, you probably were afraid of something before. So you're not going to actually make it in the first place. AI is not going to be the reason you don't make it. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? hundred percent. So I think you're right. <laughs> if you're scared, go build a bunker. But <laughs> yeah. if you're really about it, embrace it because my point of view is some of these full song generation companies, man, like they might be here right now, but you know, I'm not saying we should ever like wait for the law, but the second the law catches up and they're like, yo, you cannot train on copyrighted data. Mm -hmm. Almost every viral AI music company we know is going down. Mm -hmm. So it's almost one of those, like as always, just weather the storm in the middle of all this hype going on. Mm -hmm. You got to realize there's a lot of sketchy things going on too. So, like, if someone's ahead right now or, like, they, they feel like they're, you know, um, doing things in your lane, just stay in your lane and keep running. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I got um, two questions, and yeah. this is for the regular people that aren't in music. I got that. That yeah. are seeking a different uh, form of education. Yeah. If you didn't make a lemonade and you weren't doing remixes, what would you be doing with your life and how would AI help in mm. that life? Oh, my God. Can it? That's crazy. What would we be doing in our life if we didn't do what we were doing? Like, if you weren't a music producer and didn't create Lemonade, hmm. what would your occupation, what would your next dream occupation be? And what AI tool or what AI function would you be using to move forward and the same thing? I swear to you, I'm not always going to do this, but I got to flip this question because <laughs> I don't think I would be who I was if AI got in the way. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, to, to stitch it together, when my dad got locked up, I had to fall in love with music mm. because growing up homeless with a single mother, like, and no father figure, like, and no one teach, no one teached me how to be a man. I had to listen to music. You know what I mean? Like I had like Eminem saved my life in many ways. And like, it wasn't just listening to Eminem. It was actually knowing his story. Mm. So like knowing that made me fall in love with music, falling in love with music made me start making music starting to make music had me undo so much trauma. Undoing that trauma gave me the confidence to get a degree in college, to get into technology, to come full circle, to now build an AI music company, because I love it. Deep. But if AI, if I just typed into a text prompt and just had songs generated at 11 years old, <laughs> bruh, you know, <laughs> I don't even know what I'd be doing. So that's what I'm trying to say. Like, I can almost even think about what I would be doing if I wasn't doing this, but mm. I can't imagine doing anything else. And the reason I can't imagine it is because I got to go through it, you know? Good answer. Uh, yeah. What you think? I, I'm just a creative soul, bro. Yeah. I, I think I would just, I have to have some type of creative outlet. Yeah. So whether it's music, which was obviously my first love, or whether it's film or something visual, graphic design, I don't know what, what that would be, but it would for sure be something still in the creative space maybe design clothes i don't know like, yeah i would do something that. that would 
let me that would give me an outlet for my creative energy you know yeah, yeah. that's dope yeah, what I, about you uh i'd be an architect mm. uh I like building things. Yeah. That's why I'm a producer and I like building artists. Yeah. I think that it runs concurrent. It's not as cool. You know what I mean? It's got these <laughs> dimensions and measurements and all kinds of like. I almost went to school. For, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I almost went to school for architecture and then I was like, yo, there's a lot of math in this. <laughs> like, I don't think math. I could do this. It's a lot of math. So. I would do that and figure out what AI company will help me with the math. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. If but you yeah, figure it out, it. let me know. That's it. I might Kid change professions. <laughs> I would that, build. That's a different kind of tag. I, I definitely would build. Kid yeah. in the building. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. That was my one question because a lot of people aren't in the industry yet. Yeah. And they're like, if I don't make it, what can I do and how can AI help me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, the one thing I'll say even is like, it's a whole different topic, but like you've inspired it. I do want to say like to anyone that's listening or watching this, like bring all of who you are to everything you do um, because you will never realize what will get you in the door. Like keep it, keep it at 100. I don't know why I'm sitting with Canon and Cato right now. You know what I mean? Like being 100%. I'm a rapper, but I'm not nearly good enough to be in this room. <laughs> Rapping did not get me here. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was believing in myself, uh, you know, investing in the technology, learning it, and then being a, a thought leader in this space. And now I'm here. So I think people should be bringing all of who they are to everything they do. Because I got a homie in New York as well who actually designed these shirts. Shout out to Mike. Um, he is a, um, he's doing a lot right now. Like he's an artist, you know, he's working at the barbershop hustling. Um, he designed these t-shirts and he's got just amazing clothing designs. And that's what we've always been talking about. Like how many people just made it into the room because they brought all of who they were. And then yeah. when the time was right for them, you know, maybe they brought their music or whatever it was, but now they know all the right people and real. that was their story. Yeah. Real. You know what I mean? That's real. Yeah. It's true. It's true. This is like a popular question that I feel like I fight a lot in my comments. Um, do you feel like using a splice loop or sampling is different than using an AI generated loop? <laughs> why or why not? What do you think, Cannon? <sighs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, only, only because... Uh, Again, when we when we did some generations, and I had to hook it hook it up. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Th th there's gonna be some things you're gonna have to hook up. Yeah, splicing yeah. is not gonna put it on a platter for you. Sometimes I don't know for some people. Right. Yeah. Um. But no. Yeah. Okay. You still gotta be an architect no matter what. I I agree. I think it's just another form of collaboration yeah. to me, you know, whether you're using a splice loop or an AI generated melody or you sample, you know, it's all just a different iteration of collaboration to me. That's right. You know, that's right. That's good. And uh, like Cannon touched on, like hip hop was built on sampling. Right. Yeah. So I just look at it as another way of sampling, another form iteration of sampling. Yeah. You know? Splice, you owe me a check. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you do the 50 years of hip-hop with them or something? Yeah, they paid me well. Uh, <laughs> so cut another uh, check. I can check. only imagine, bro. Cut another check. Imagine. Another. <laughs>